is up everybody welcome back midwestern emo emo from the midwest with its various open tunings whiny vocals and overall sense of loneliness and longing this genre is a staple of midwest culture and today we're gonna learn just how to make it the main thing you're gonna need for this is some sort of guitar it doesn't have to be an electric guitar, you can go acoustic and that'll be perfectly fine. Just so long as you can put the guitar in an alternate tuning. That's one of the main characteristics of this genre is messing around with some sort of open tuning. The tuning that I'm going to be using today is F, A, C, G, C, E. But you can honestly just Google Midwest emo guitar tunings and you'll find a bunch of results from people who like this tuning or that tuning, certain bands that use particular tunings or whatever, but I just found that I like this one and that's what we're going to be using today. So generally when I'm playing with an open tuning, what I'll do is I'll take a capo and put it just somewhere up a little higher. And that just gives it a little bit of a nicer sound. You can kind of control where your playing is going to be. And generally the way that you come up with Midwest emo riffs and stuff like that is you just kind of fiddle around with the open tuning. And then maybe try to fit some chords in there. So just go from this to this. Switch it up. So just try to play around like that. And then once you have a rough idea of the chords, you can kind of start adding in some of the little kind of stuff in there. Just try out different notes, see what works when you slide to one note to the other, do the little hammer-ons and pull-offs. A lot of times when I try to write these melodies, I find myself adding in too many little like accents and hammer-ons and melody notes. So try to keep it relatively simple and don't like do too much and get too crazy with it. You might be more skilled with a pick than I am, but I personally am not very good at using a pick. So it took me a little bit of practice to actually get the riff that I want to play down with a pick. But ideally you do want to use a pick when you play the riff because it gives it more of that Midwest emo sound. So the main riff that I've come up with that I'm going to use goes like this. But as you may have noticed, that is only two chords. So it is going to get a little bit repetitive after a while. So what I've decided to do is have that be kind of the main riff. And then I'm going to do a strumming pattern like this. And with those chords, I'm gonna do a similar arpeggio plucking type thing. Just something simple like. When you're coming up with chord progressions in an alternate tuning, you kind of just have to forget everything you know and just play around until you get something good. So I'm actually gonna record the main riff on electric guitar, but as I said, if you've only got acoustic or something like that, acoustic will work fine. And I think I'm gonna go capo at the second fret here. Okay, now, now we're gonna record the second part where it matches with the chord change. And what I'm also going to do right now before I put away the electric guitar is also record strums of those chords. Just like some simple little... This is a pretty common thing in Midwest emo stuff to have just like a simple strumming chord progression type thing. Sometimes they'll also do it really fast too, something like this. But we're doing it at a regular pace. I would say it's also more commonly done with acoustic guitar than electric guitar. Having those acoustic strums with the electric guitar arpeggio melody over top of it is a really common Midwest emo thing. But what I'm doing for this beat is recording every single pattern on both acoustic and electric. It just gives you more variety and more patterns to choose from at the end when you're actually laying out the song. So now just recording all the same stuff, but on acoustic. Okay, guitar recording is done. Now we move on to drum recording. Welcome to the drum set. It is now time for the recording of the drums. So with this emo of the Midwestern variety, we need a little bit more rock type drum sound than I usually do. Normally my drums are very muted indie rock kind of a thing. Normally I've got a little shirt that's covering the snare. Instead of covering it fully, I'm just kind of gonna move it off to the side. 
As far as the drum pattern, zzz, I've decided that I'm going to do three different things. The first of which is kind of a more upbeat, faster pattern for when the main riff is playing with just the two chords. So it's going to be something kind of like this. And that little guy right there is going to lead into the main pattern, which is a little bit slower and more flowy, if that makes sense. And then next, after that, I'm also going to record kind of the same thing, but on the ride cymbal instead of the hi-hat. I don't even know if I'll actually use this pattern. If I do, that's great. But if not, it's always nice to have more tracks than you need. And as far as the drum mic setup, ladies and gentlemen, it's nothing too crazy. Snare top and bottom, little overhead kick mic. And then this bad boy right here is going to be used as a room mic, just placed kind of over there somewhere. However, for a long time, I didn't own a drum set, let alone even know how to play drums. So I'm going to show you how to program some pretty basic rock type drums. Inside of my super cool indie drum pack, I actually have 40 live recorded drum loops that are really good for indie rock type genres, but they would work for this too. There's also some one shots that you can play around with. So I'll link that in the description below, but you can also just search up like Midwest emo drum kit or emo rock drum kit, something like that. And you'll find something that you can work with. So we can basically just copy the same pattern that I played, which is kind of something like this. Boom. And we'll just do a boom, boom, boom. And then we'll do a two-step hi-hat pattern. But we're not just going to leave this how it is. We're going to go in and actually adjust the velocity of every other hi-hat. And then we're going to bring down the overall velocity. And then we're going to do a similar thing with both the kick and the snare. And just kind of like bring these up, but not evenly. You can also just hit Alt-R and that'll randomize the velocities. You can also turn the swing up a little bit if you want to. And then what I also like to do to give it a more real sound is to add some crashes in there. So you can hear it sounds pretty good. but we need to make it sound better. The way we're gonna do that is by adding some effects onto these bad boys. So if you go into the channel rack and then just click and drag on all the drum sounds, hit Control L to assign them all to a mixer and then Control and click over all these, right click on an empty mixer track down here, this arrow, and then just do route to this track only. And now all these drum sounds are running into one mixer track so we can put effects on that and it'll affect all the drums. And the first thing we're gonna put on there is DBX 160. This is my absolute favorite drum compressor. It just gives your drums such a perfect sound. I use it on literally every drum mix. Basically just turn up the threshold, turn up the gain, and then turn down the compression pretty low. It just gives them so much more power and punch that way. And then we're also going to put some reverb on this to give it a more realistic kind of cohesive sound. And we're going to put it before the compressor. If you're normally recording drums, that room sound is going to be included in your recording. So that's what we're trying to simulate here. And my absolute favorite reverb plugin is Trueverb. There's actually a lot of presets in here. And I'm just going to go with something like Drum Room. And what we can do is actually increase the room size and decrease the distance. When we do that, we're getting more of the drum sound and less of the room sound. So it becomes a little bit cleaner. And now here we have. And those sound just as good, if not much better than my drums. So don't worry about it. If you don't have a drum set, you can do this. So now that we have drums, I'm going to record bass. More recently, I've been recording drums first and then bass because I like to fit the bass line around the drums. I feel like it just makes the groove a lot better and makes it sound more cohesive. If you're recording bass or even if you're just programming bass in your DAW, it's important to remember that we mess with the tuning of our guitar. The lowest note for the guitar tuning that I used was F. That means that everything is going to be shifted over by one. So whereas for the guitar, we had the capo on the second fret, which would make the root note of the main chord be on the second fret. Since this bass is still in standard, we're gonna move it over one, and that root note is gonna be here on the third fret. So for the part where I have the main riff playing with the two chords, I'm just gonna do a simple pattern like this with a pick, mind you. And then once it changes to the four chords, we're just going straight up standard bass chugging. You really don't have to do anything too crazy with the bass. That's why if you want to use one shots or a plugin like Ample Bass or something, that'll be perfectly fine. All right, boys and girls, this is something that is not a commonly done Midwest emo thing, but I'm going to do a little guitar solo type thing just because I have a melody for it in my head and I think it would sound really good with this track. We're plugging up Old Faithful and we're just going to give it a whirl. All 
All right, so that pretty much does it as far as recording goes, but now we're gonna move on to the mixing and the laying out the beat portion, neither of which are gonna be too complicated, so I'm just gonna go over them briefly. On the main guitar, what I'm gonna do is my standard procedure for all electric guitars, put a little CLA guitars mono to stereo on that bad boy, and then I have this clean reamp preset that I do, it kinda looks like this. Put a little EQ on it to cut out some of the low end because there's a whole lot of low end muddiness mess going on. And then I put some true verb on it to give it some ambience and make it sound like it was recorded in a big room or something. So then for the same thing, but with acoustic guitar, put a little compression on it, and then I put CLA Unplugged, which is basically the same thing as CLA guitars, but for like acoustic instruments. For the electric guitar strums, what I did was I recorded two takes, panned one to the left and one to the right, it's called double tracking. And then I just added the same effects as the main electric guitar part, but with just a little bit more reverb. As far as the layout goes, what I've decided to do is have the main part with just the two chords kind of play in the beginning. And then bring in the acoustic, the drums, and the bass and then transition into the four chords right here. And then I have a part where it's more stripped back and it's just the drums, bass, and acoustic. That's the nice thing about recording everything on acoustic and electric and multiple takes so that you can just kind of swap things out and make it so it doesn't get too repetitive. That's the main thing when you're laying out your beats is you wanna make sure you keep it fresh and make it not you know repetitive and annoying to listen to after a while. So yeah, just make sure you switch up the different parts throughout the beat, keep it fresh, keep it interesting. And that right there is pretty much all there is to it. So there you have it, my friends. That is pretty much gonna do it for me in this video here today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a little Midwestern emo music with me here today. If you're an artist in the market for beats kind of like this one, you can check out my beat store, which I'll link down in the description below. And I actually do offer a custom beat service where I can make any beat you want specifically for you. Both of those things will be linked down in the description below, along with my social media and all that other crap too. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you all next time.